Hey everybody, it's Ms. Dietrich helping you on Lesson 6.5, which is Problem Solving, Distance, Rate, and Time Formulas. Your teacher probably has already talked a lot about this formula right here, distance equals rate times time, but you might have forgotten that there are two other ways that you could consider solving some of these problems, and that's to use the, these two formulas depending on what it is that they're asking for. If they're asking for the rate or they're looking for that, you could use this, rate equals distance divided by time, or if they're asking for the time, you could use this formula, time equals distance divided by rate. Now just a couple reminders, dividing is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal, so that's going to be uh, evident with number with this using this formula, and it's going to be evident with, I think, one of these two as we read through, we'll figure it out. All right, the other thing that I want to point out is whenever they give you a rate, you want to write it in this way. You want to put it as a fraction and make sure you include the two units, and the reason why is because it'll be more evident how about canceling out units so that you'll be able to tell that the answer here is going to be in miles. Sometimes on multiple choice tests they may give you two choices with the correct number, but they'll give you different units and you'll have to recognize which one is the correct answer. All right, let's take a look at number two. How long will it take a seal swimming at a speed of eight miles per hour to travel 52 miles? So 52 miles, let's kind of label things. This is a distance. This is a rate, and the reason why we know that is because we have the something per something. And then how long, that's the time. So that means we can go ahead and use this formula right here to do number two. Time equals distance, which is 52 miles. And it's a good idea to put the units in. Divided by, and the rate here is 8 miles per hour. So we're going to write it kind of like this. 8 miles Oops, we're running out of room there. Per, and in this case, it's per hour, per one hour. All right, now did you know that dividing is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal? And the reason why that's important is because it's going to help you to understand how units cancel out. 52 miles times the reciprocal, this is one hour over eight miles. So you see we just flipped it to its reciprocal, its inverse. All right, now the reason why that's significant is because now you can see, we can stick one underneath this, this if that helps, we're going to be canceling out the miles. So now it will be evident that your final answer will be hours, and we want time, right? So time is in hours. So the only thing left you have to do is to just do the 52 times one, and then you'll get your answer, and you already know it's going to be, you know, hours or I'm sorry, you're going to do 52 divided by 8, and that will give you your, your, an, your answer, which will be in hours. All right, so now let's move on. Number three, a dragonfly traveled at a rate of 35 miles per hour for 2 and 5 tenths hours. What distance did the dragonfly travel? All right, let's clean up our work here to give ourselves some room, and let's think about what they're really asking here. A dragonfly traveled at a rate of, so that means they're giving us the rate, 35 miles an hour per hour for 2.5 hours. What distance did the dragonfly travel? That means we're going to be using this formula. Distance equals rate times time. Distance equals, now remember the rate, you're going to put it in this format. It's 35 miles per hour. 35 miles per one hour. And then we did that for 2 and 5 tenths hours. By the way, it's convenient that these two units match. If they didn't, it would be necessary for you to convert this to whatever unit you have down here so that the units cancel out. But fortunately for us, the units cancel out. So the only thing left you have to do is to multiply these two numbers together, and then you'll have your answer for number 3. All right, so good luck finishing up the remaining ones. Hopefully you'll find this helpful.